Hi, and welcome to Riddles in the Dark, where I endeavor to learn and explain the rules of the One Ring 2nd Edition role-playing game by Free League Publishing. In the One Ring RPG, player characters are generally referred to as player heroes, setting the tone from the gate of how your character is to be played and how they fit into the greater narrative of the setting and world of Middle-earth. The adventure creation process will be split into two videos, so please make sure to watch part two to finish off your adventure when you start your game. In line with the heroic line of thinking, each player hero is defined by the specific heroic culture they belong to. Here are the following playable heroic cultures as found in the core rulebook, starting on page 34. They are Bardings, Dwarves of Durin's Folk, Elves of Linden, Hobbits of the Shire, Men of Bree, and lastly, the Rangers of the North. Note, there is an optional playable culture that combines some features of both Men of Bree with some features from Hobbits of the Shire, and that's called the Bree Hobbit, and can be found on page 181 in the text box called The Big and the Little. Falco Hornblower in my Strider Mode campaign is a Bree Hobbit, and you can check out his adventures in my series of actual play narrative videos here. Each player hero has a set of characteristics attributes, skills, combat proficiencies, distinctive features, and typical names and languages that are defined by what hero culture they belong to. Let's take a look at each separate characteristic as we create together a player hero. We will choose the Dwarves of Durin's Folk as the hero culture for our example of today's creation process. First, characteristics. As commonly known about dwarves in most of, if not all, role-playing games, and obviously no different in the One Ring and world of Middle-earth, dwarves are exceedingly strong, hard to break, or corrupt, but hold on to old quarrels and new slights with the same zeal. This is represented by what is called a cultural blessing, and in the case of the dwarves of Durin's folk, that is called redoubtable. Dwarves make light of burdens, especially when it comes to wearing armor. You half the load rating of any armor you're wearing, rounding fractions up, including helms, but not shields. Note, this is an important feature of the Dwarves of Durin culture that makes them excellent combatants, as they can wear heavier, more protective armor without having to worry as much about load and the effects of wariness during combat. Nogrim. As stout and hardy as the Dwarves are, they are shorter than bigger folk, and thus have favored shorter weapons over long, long ones. Dwarven adventurers cannot use the following pieces of war gear in the game. Great bow, great spear, or a great shield. Next, we have standard of living. Dwarves of Durin's folk start off as being prosperous. As commonly known, dwarves hold in high regard wealth in the form of precious metals, and with the reclaiming of Erebor and their kingdom restored, this is represented in the standard of living as being prosperous. We'll look at how these impact starting equipment later in the next video. Attributes. The One Ring RPG lets you choose what numbers represent your core attributes or to roll D6 on the table, highlight it, and have it randomly selected for those that like a little randomness in their player heroes. Looking at the options, we'll create a more balanced player hero. So selecting the fifth option, we get the following numbers for strength, heart, and wisdom, and width, sorry, as seen here and mark those numbers in the corresponding section in the player hero sheet. These numbers now help us in creating what's called derived stats, which are endurance and hope, which keeps the venture going, and parry, which sets the target number for all attack rolls targeting a player hero. So let's go ahead and determine the following. Endurance. For dwarves of endurance folk, endurance is the strength number as listed here, plus 22 for a total of 27 for endurance. Hope is calculated using the heart score, plus 8, for a total of 12. And parry is calculated using the wit score, plus 10, for a total of 15. Now on to skills. As we can see on the character sheet, skills are listed under the corresponding attribute that it's attributable to. Each hero or culture has access to the same list of skills, but not all cultures are the same and are represented with different starting values for each skill and some are favored more than others. For Dwarves of Durin's Folk, we'll mark the appropriate numbers as listed in the table here onto the character sheet. 
Next, we select one out of the two skills underlined and mark one as favored. Here, as our dwarf will be an adventurer and exploring for lost wealth and riches, we'll select for him travel as his favorite skill. When rolling for this skill, he'll get to roll two feet die instead of one, choosing the best number. You can check out the video on favorite rolls found here. There's a little more still yet to do for skills, but we'll look at that shortly. Combat proficiencies. Dwarves of Durin's folk start off with having to choose either axes or swords and copy the two ranks onto the character sheet. Our dwarf will select axes as a preferred weapon. Next, we get to choose another combat proficiency from the ones left. We'll choose the bow as a second proficiency and mark off one rank on the character sheet. Distinctive features. We now get to select two distinctive features out of those listed for the heroic culture you choose. There are a total of 24 distinct features listed in the core rulebook. We'll select Fierce and Stern as the starting distinctive features. Distinct features are a way for you as a player to flesh out your character and represents the adventurer's build, temper, personality traits, or peculiarities. This helps in providing you as the player some great threads to pull on when role-playing your hero in-game. Distinctive features can give you bonuses to improve your chances to succeed in enrolling a skill, and if this happens, your player hero is considered inspired. A distinctive feature can give this bonus if, based on its description, and it is reasonable plausible for someone with that quality to fare better than an individual without it. Your lore master will decide ultimately if you do. Languages and typical names. All cultures speak the common tongue. But for Dwarves of Dern's folk, they preserve the knowledge of the secret language of Dwarven. In naming your player hero, and this goes for all cultures, there are common male, female, and given names that are listed for you to either choose or help you in creating one not listed. For our dwarf, we'll choose one that's listed, and we will call him Buren. As he hasn't seen much adventure and hasn't made a name for himself, we'll forgo any honorific title. This ends this portion of the adventurer creation process. No matter which heroic culture you choose, each brings their unique skills and flavor to the company and provides ample opportunity for great role play in the game. In part two, we'll look at further fleshing out your player hero by reviewing and adding callings, previous experience that increases your skills, starting gear, starting rewards and virtues. We'll take a look at creating a company, selecting a patron, fellowship rating and focus, and further experience and adventures in different series of videos. Thank you for watching. Cheers.